Welcome everybody to the Tuesday Amar Mudo Discovery. Today we're talking about losing control. How's the audio on this? We're doing good? Okay, if you're watching or listening, you care about change, you know it's coming, and you want to be better at it, be good at it, and prepare as much as you can to be as adaptive as you can be. Today's topic in the face of disruption is uh, our feeling of losing control. So I've got a very, uh, how do you say it, uh, personal example of how I have uh, uh, come to the steps that I'm going to share with you about what to do when you're uh, confronted with losing control. But uh, before I get to that, I want to acknowledge that the world right now is in a place it's never been before. The leadership is trying to help us figure out how to go day by day. But a lot of us have been told to wait. And waiting without an outlook is yeah, tiring, maybe even uh, unmotivating uh, without having a perspective we don't know what we're waiting for what's it going to look like when we're done waiting and this this feeling of losing control um it's 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 not a pleasant feeling i think everybody who's been to a situation that they felt like they were losing control they, they didn't feel too great about it and it's a it's a stressful stressful situation to be in if you consider that uh, we like to know what's coming. We like to know to uh, to to influence what's going to happen in our lives and in our days. And now, for a large part of us, that's very unclear. Um, the 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 impact of it is not on, only on an individual level; it's also on a community level, on a society level. So. I myself have, have got to say today has been in all the whole quarantine period, I think one of my biggest dips in morale because maybe the weather, maybe because I'm having a urinary tract infection and the antibiotics are kicking in, maybe because my living room is a mess, because my girlfriend is moving in, maybe because time is grinding it out on me. But today I did not feel... As hyped as I usually feel, no, even better, I felt bleh, like, just like bleh, all day. And so I was looking at the, the, the steps that I, uh, I'm going to share with you, and uh, I, I was able to put it to the test today. So I was able to make a productive day out of a day that I felt like I have zero control. And um, I don't know which one of you is experiencing the, the, the loss of control, the, the, the feeling of not having any uh, grip on the situation, that it's really out of your hands. And usually the body, its response to stress is the fight, flight or freeze, like the reptile brain or ancestors uh, had to decide to survive. I you got to fight it out. I got to run away. Or you stay still and just hope it passes away. Right now, leadership in the world has decided the best thing to do is to wait. Wait and control the situation on a, on a uh, health uh, risk level. But this forced freeze is creating that inside of you, the fight or flight is, is like kind of frustrated. It's blocked. It's like you're... You're constipated in how you can respond to a situation. Today, even in the Netherlands, which is like a very uh, mature democracy, people are protesting against the measures we're taking against this uh, virus. And I don't think uh, it's unreasonable, un unreasonable to feel the way we're feeling. Um, feeling desperate, feeling uh, unhappy, feeling maybe even personal sorrow or grief because of loss, uh, all these things are uh, to be acknowledged and validated. It's not like nothing's happening, but we cannot talk about the fact that uh, we're just waiting 
and there are a lot of hard decisions besides the weight that we need to take. Um, before I share with you the steps that I I, I share, which uh, I, I got for you to transition yourself out of a personal freeze, and they have to do. Uh, I'm gonna go into where I discovered this the most for me. I was reflecting on my life. And the best anecdote I could come up with for you guys is about a year after I broke my neck, um, my ex-girlfriend moved in with me and we were living together for six months and I was doing everything walking and with a segue and I was basically pushing myself beyond all limits. I was fighting like my primary choice in every stressful situation is to fight. You know, I choose to run away, maybe from my emotions, but from the situation, I stay and fight. And I had to be uh, committed to the hospital again to uh, figure out what I'm going to do because my body was just imploding. Too many injuries, could barely walk, I was not functioning. And after a week of being tested in the hospital, I came back and I discovered a whole big bag of empty bottles. And I was thinking to myself, like... I've been gone all week. I don't know where all these bottles are coming from and what's up with that. And as I was asking my ex this question, she just started laughing in my face and told me that she was an alcoholic. And yeah, I was just dumbstruck by that bold confession, just laughing in my face like... I was the stupid one for not noticing or not knowing. And that, then, then I realized, like, okay, this explains a lot why she has more trouble getting out of bed than me in the morning. Like a whole waterfall of aha moments uh, happened in my head. But I was still confronted with the situation that uh, my girlfriend, who's been living with me for six months, who does not get off her ass, does not move, is not proactive in getting her life uh, on her rails um, as an alcoholic, while at the same time I have to go back to the rehab clinic to maybe get a wheelchair and figure out what to do with my body after fighting for about two years. And just to make a little cherry on the top, I had to hand in my thesis in two weeks because I, I've been out of the running uh, of school and... Uh, for a year and I spent six months getting back to my thesis. So boom, all this hit me in the face in one go. I took a moment and I decided on that spot to break up with her, ask her to leave out, uh, to, to move out, get a house, figure it out, whatever she needs to do to get out of my life because I was not uh, looking for carrying somebody else's uh, dependence on a substance with me. I had enough battles of my own to fight so to say and um, the decisions that I had to make in that moment were like okay if I stay with her in one house it's going to implode so I have to decide to stay at my mom's maybe on the couch for a couple of weeks so I can focus on finishing this thesis because I want to be done with school and then from there on whatever it is that is required for me to get my body back in shape or on track or less pain, I wasn't sleeping well, uh, sign up for the rehab clinic. It was all bad, like ugly, painful, uncomfortable, depressing, caca. Not cool. Just like, okay, everything that's nice in your life is stopping now and you got to go through a whole bunch of layers of shit before... Before what? Why are you doing all this? So this is where I've been able to uh, extract these two steps that I can offer you to get yourself out of a personal freeze. First step is acknowledging to know which steps you need to take but won't. It doesn't mean you should start taking the steps, but knowing and realizing with yourself what are the steps I need to take but I won't. That's really important. For me, as she was telling me this, as this waterfall was, was uh, occurring in my head and I was starting to get pissed off, I realized I needed to make a couple of pretty tough decisions, which are not decisions I was waiting for to make. But 
they were needed. Decisions were needed in that moment from me, from her, from whoever. Situation was poor, decisions were necessary. Knowing what these decisions are, which steps need to be taken, it's really important. So I knew I need to go to rehab, I need to finish my thesis, I need to not live together with a person who's self destructive. Um, these are the steps. Oh, fuck. That's the second tip I have for you. When you know the steps, you're like, oh, fuck, I don't want to take these steps. Uh, it's important to visualize what comes after the whole oh, fuck period. How do you transform the current oh, fuck into a future oh, snap, look at my life now. I went through that valley and I came back and I know how tough it was. To get yourself there, to jump into the valley and be like, okay, I'm ready to get dirty. I'm ready to like put in the work. You got to know what you're doing it for. So some type of visualization. And I was just, for me, the visualization was, oh, student debt's going to be like cut in half if I get my degree. I might be able to go outside again and sleep again if I go to rehab. And I won't feel this dark energy that I've been having around me for such a long time. So, if I extrapolate these two pieces of advice that I have for you, acknowledging which steps you need to take but won't, and visualizing what the current oh fuck would look like when it would be turned into oh snap, these two steps right now are pretty hard. The first one I think is doable. Like one of the first podcasts I made was about the financial implications of disruption. So if you uh, are dealing with your income drying out, being minimized, the sooner you start budgeting your costs and like minimizing the expenses you have, the longer you'll stay afloat. You might not enjoy that in the moment. You might think, oh, fuck, I got to give up my Netflix account and I can't buy the expensive cookies anymore and no more Ben and Jerry's for me. That's not nice right now. But the oh snap, the visualization you're making is when I get out of this, I'm going to be financially fit again. I'm going to be able to go traveling again. I'm not going to go bankrupt. And instead of thinking in a negative, like not bankrupt, you think I'm going to be financially safe. For me, the, 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 the word safe is a very important word because um, when you're losing control, what you're also losing is your sense of safety. When everything is out of your hands, you're like, Jesus, take the wheel. I don't know Jesus personally. He's taking good care of me so far, but it's not really embracing you with a lot of safety. So the visualization that you're making, the thing that you're visualizing, like super shit right now, but in the future it's going to be nice. Um, and visualize that safe feeling. What does that look like? If you go, if you go through the valley and you come out of it, you're going to feel stronger. You're, you're going to feel like you're, you're made out of uh, tough wood. But also you're going to be like, ah, oh, this is what I created for myself and my loved ones. And we're safe and sound and we're embracing each other again. Don't get me wrong. Eh? These two pieces of advice, like acknowledging which steps you need to take but won't and visualizing what you want at the end of it are just like a tiny, teeny part of the whole process. The transition itself takes a lot of hard work patience and luck and it starts with faith and if you are able to really anchor that faith inside of yourself by visualizing what that outlook looks like for you uh, will help you so like truly surrendering to the fact that you are frozen starts by acknowledging that you know which steps you need to take but you won't and to shift out of that internal lock a, bit of, a little bit of surrendering can help you grasp that faith that you need to be able to visualize. Because I also know, like a day like today, I've got a lot of things going on. I'm trying to get a lot of nice projects off the ground. But today I don't feel it. 
I don't feel it at all. And I feel like I've lost control and all I'm doing is effort, like it's not having any impact. It does not take away my resolve. So I know maybe I should start acknowledging which steps I need to take, but I won't. When I know which steps I need to take, like for instance, this podcast, this thing that's on my schedule, I care about it because I'm sharing my feelings and my thoughts with, with, with you. Uh, but during the rest of the day, I'm writing articles, I'm working on my book, I'm working on creating more content to share with you in the form of a curriculum. I need to know which steps I need to take. And if I'm not taking them, just knowing what I need to do already gives me a better feeling of being in control because losing control and like not knowing what's next is one thing but like not being able to like process for yourself okay what's up today this this feeling of being lost is like a complete drainer of energy and the 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 visualization part i believe is really important to get yourself out of that freeze because how else are you going to get yourself moving what's what's so inviting about putting yourself through a lot of hardship if you don't know what you're doing it for. Um, the thing that I want to share with you is knowing that these steps are available and they impact your energy. Like if I speak to people, by now people are getting fed up of waiting. It's like draining you. It's, it's not good for your energy. Knowing what things give you energy, so what activities, what surroundings, what state of mind, and what companionship, people, it's kind of hard right now, but just having a good conversation can already give you some good energy. These things are really important to feed yourself and to be able to take on hardship, to, to, to feed yourself energetically, emotional energy, mental energy, and also taking good care of your body. The energy management compass that I've been mentioning many times in my episodes is a curriculum that you can take to really crystallize what these activity does, activities are for you that give you energy. And to know when you're having a day like I was having today that you're like, Ugh. first step you need to take <laughs> is feed yourself some energy. So I knew I needed some energy today. And I t it took me a little bit of effort to get myself into the motion of gathering some energy. But when I did, I made my, my, my day look like a minus six to like a zero neutral. And now it's going up in the positive again. Um, I hope you like what I'm sharing content wise. Give me comments and feedback. Thanks for joining for today's episode. It's been a short one, but I think... The content of today is something that you should sit with. And if you have questions or comments, please share them as well. The dark emotions that we feel when we're stuck in a freeze, they last longer if we keep procrastinating. So instead of just having the options fight, flight or freeze, there is a fourth option, and that's what I wanted to offer today. The fourth option is to adapt. And adapting means making hard decisions, going through the turbulence and friction of changing. And usually we do know which steps are required for us to change, but we won't because it's nice and comfortable where we're at. But if you're able to visualize what change would look like, then maybe you have some type of motivation to move through that change. Thank you for tuning in today for the Aomuto Discovery. If you feel like you're losing control, please remind. It's important to acknowledge, to know which steps you need to take but won't for change and to visualize what the current oh fuck, the situation you're in right now, can look like. So transform it into like, damn, that's a nice thing I put up for myself. And then be ready to put in the blood, sweat, maybe some tears, no problem. But know you're blessed. Know that with hard work, patience and luck, you'll get there. 
Thanks for tuning in and see you next Tuesday.